Well, hello, Facebook land. How you doing? Happy Mother's Day. Welcome to the uh, Unleash the Dragon Challenge, the 30-day Unleash the Dragon Challenge with our six animals, Kung Fu, from Qinlong. And um, I'm just going to check out, check in here for a little bit and just uh, check in to see if there's um, how the sound is doing. And I'll just wait for a little bit. Hello, 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 hello. Testing, testing. This being Mother's Day, I'm not expecting much of a large audience, and I hope that you're enjoying uh, some really great quality time with your family. I hope that you're, if you're a mother, that you're being showered with love and appreciation. And even if you're not a mother, I hope you're being showered with love and appreciation. All right, so hello. Let's get into our challenge for today. Today we're gonna be doing our second day of Python. Um, and I'll maybe just tilt the camera down a little bit. There we go, that's a bit better. All right. So, welcome to day seven of our 30 day challenge, the Unleash the Dragon challenge. And today we're gonna to be doing uh, Python, our second day of Python. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit, we're gonna do some more uh, alignment exercises. We'll have our regular sandwich structure. We'll do the bow first, do some alignment work, and then do the bow again so that you can have a before and after comparison and hopefully get more into the animal or at least get more of a feeling of the animal. Um, let's start off actually, let's uh, recap a few of the other animals as well. Let's, do, let's start off with a little bit of boa just because it's a nice way to warm up. And uh, boa very much is appropriate for a day like today. Uh, boa is, the, is a feminine archetype. So each of the animals um, represents a masculine or feminine archetype. The snakes are feminine, the cats are more are masculine. And boa is the, uh, the, they, the animals exist on a spectrum and the boa is the most feminine of the feminine. And in a way it's very appropriate for Mother's Day. The quality of the boa, that loving and enlarging and encompassing embrace is what the boa is all about. And, <clears throat> and so as a way of celebrating uh, the, in, in, as a way of celebrating that always enlarging and encompassing love that motherhood represents, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're a mother or not. Boa is a great way of celebrating and embodying and that quality. So let's just touch in with that a little bit. So take a moment, feel your body, relinquish and relinquish any kind of tension you may, may be feeling in your body. And again, today I'm foregoing the overhead mic here, so I'm just gonna theatrically project and I hope that you can hear. So allow tension to drop on your body. Relax tension from behind your eyes, your jaw, your head, feel your neck, your shoulders, your torso, your spine. Feel your pelvis, your quads, feel the knees, feel your weight distributed evenly through both feet, front and back, left and right. And bending down, relinquishing as you exhale, caress the back of the barrel, inhale, and as you inhale, that lifts your body up, the hands come open, turn the feet out, hug a big, a big beach ball, bring that in, exhale, let go. In between bows, you come up, and then you do the next bow. And as you're doing this, you're asking yourself, how much softer, smoother, more fluid can you make it? How much more easily can you float? And 
draw in energy from the earth. Bring in energy from the earth as the earth gives you whatever you need in order to survive and live and then give back in gratitude back to the earth. And come up from there and just hold the big beach ball. Let the beach ball breathe and as it breathes it expands and contracts and as it expands and contracts so do you softening softening your gaze and relinquishing any kind of tension you may be feeling anywhere in your body good Okay, so that's a little reminder of BOA. It's always great to start and end off with BOA. <clears throat> it gives you a pause in your day. All right, so let's go into, let's do Python. So with Python, we take a moment and we check in with our skeletal system and we feel the structure of our body. And with Python in particular, what you feel isn't just the bones, but the spaces between the bones, the spaces in the joints. And you feel every time that you're inhaling and exhaling, that you're breathing directly into the space between the joints, and then exhaling from the space between the joints. And um, it's, it's a great way of paying attention to your body and as a martial artist who's delved into other martial arts, that little imagery has helped me sort of adapt when I go into a different kind of style. It gives me a, a different vantage point, a different tool in my toolkit um, from, you know, to use in my thinking about how to learn a new movement. And surprisingly, it's actually surprisingly practical. So imagining like that you're breathing into the joints of your body and that you're exhaling from the joints in your body. So like a hydraulic system, your joints fill up with breath. You get a bit taller, you expand out in every direction. And as you exhale, you feel all of your bones stacking on top of each other. We'll do this a few times. So breathing in, filling in, filling the space between the joints in your ankles, your heels, in your knees, in your, in your knee joint, in your pelvis, between each of your vertebra, between each of your ribs, in the shoulder girdle, between your shoulder blades, your collarbone, and your upper arm bone. Feel the vertebra of your neck stack up on cushions of air. And you even feel the plates of your skull fill up with breath and expand ever so slightly. The joint of your jaw. And then as you exhale, you empty air out of all of those joints, the fused joints of your skull, all of the vertebral cushions of your, along your spine, or your connections to your ribs, settling your spine down onto your pelvis, exhaling from the fused bones of your pelvis, exhaling from the space between, the space inside the joints of your knee, your ankle, even the small little bones of your feet. Let's do it one more time. Breathing in, <clears throat> breathing into the small bones of the foot, into the socket of the heel, between the tibia and the fibia of your shin bones, up into the knee joint, up into the hip socket. Feel that 
Expand out, front, back, up and down. Feel the bowl of your pelvis fill up with breath. And feel each of the discs between your spine fill up with breath like a big, like they're big pin cushions of air, big, big balloons of air all the way up your spine into the sockets of your shoulder. Feel breath and air expand your shoulder blades, your collarbones, and your uh, humerus, your arm bone, the upper arm bone out. Fill up the bones of the forearm, meta, the metacarpals, the bones of your hands, your palm, the phalanges, the bones of your fingers, between the fingers, cervical vertebra, the skull plate, the mandibular joint of your jaw. Fill that all up with breath, like you're pressing breath into those spaces. And then exhale. Let air escape out of those places, out of those spaces, and settle your bones. Let your bones settle back down onto your feet, into the earth. Let's do it one more time. I won't talk as much. Just go up your body, feet, heels, shin bones, knees, up into the thigh and the pelvis, the pelvic girdle, the, the pelvic bowl, up along your spine, feel the space between your vertebra and your rib cage, shoulders, upper arms, forearms, palms and fingers, neck and head, the skull plates, the joint, the mandibular joint of your jaw, fill up, front, back, side to side, top to bottom, and exhale, settle, let your bones stack on top of each other. Let them settle on top of each other. Feel it. I wanted to emphasize that exercise a little bit because it's a cornerstone for Python to focus on the body and the space between the joints in particular. And also because that sensation of feeling your bones settle and stack on each other is, is also really important. Uh, just as we've been doing with the alignment exercises where we will get our, like we did yesterday with our pelvis, uh, uh, feeling the natural alignment of the pelvis so that force that ge that's generated from the leg can naturally travel through the pelvis to the, uh, to the upper limbs. Just as those kinds of alignment exercises are important, so too is allowing, having that sense of your bones stacking on top of each other down into your feet. Um, this has been an ongoing practice, but again, I want to shout out to Kelly Lake, who really just highlighted it beautifully in some, in some recent classes. The, um, um, that ability to settle your skeleton down into your feet, into the ground, um, is just really is really important it's foundational in martial arts dance yoga practices and just for good alignment in general and you can do yourself a lot of good just by checking in with your skeleton and feeling like your body weight is settling down through your knees through your shin bones into your feet into the earth and it's particularly important for Python because Python plays with these whips and centrifugal forces, and it has to be grounded 
the wave, the, the whip of my arm connects to the whip of my spine, connects to the whip of my leg, and the handle of the whip is the ground. So it's, I land the, I, by um, grounding my skeleton into my foot, into the ground, that's how I generate power for a wave. This is more martial than any, if you're a martial artist, that, that matters. Um, but really, in any kind of you know, activity around the house, whether you're lifting groceries, moving, if you're catching a child, or uh, you know, just any everyday activity, you'll do your body better if you can feel your connection to the ground. And whatever action that you're doing starts and ends with settling into the ground. And that's Python's gift. There's a kind of a, a lazy heaviness about it. And that's the other thing about the Python is that it's not forceful and muscular. You don't force the wave to travel through. It's, like I said, lazy and heavy. It's like a bear that's like, I'm, what is this thing that's you know in front of me? Whatever, boom. <laughs> just, and it, there's just so much power in that wave because you have your whole body behind it that you don't have to exert much effort. Um, so it's casual. And that's the thing about the python in terms of its personality is that it's uh, dissembling. It looks so casual as to be unassuming. And yet behind it, there's a lot of work and momentum that, um, that, it, that things just like get brushed out of the way for it. So this is the, that's the quality of the python. Um, so again, coming back to that heaviness, that easy going down into the earth, um, heaviness that is relaxed. So keep that sense of relaxation, keep that sense of um, waves starting and returning into the earth. And let's do the bow together. So it's a little bit like bow, you start off relaxed and dropping down as you exhale. Let your weight settle into your feet, evenly distributed through the front and the back. And as you inhale, you fill up with breath. The breath fills up your body, it raises your arms for you. Take a little step back and you fill up, you hold the breath, bang the heels into the ground. Let's try that again. I think I'm okay here. All right, so you curl up as you inhale. Arms come up because of the breath. Palms are facing each other. You hold the breath. You slam the heels into the ground, packing energy into your skeleton. And as you, after you do that, you start to exhale. And as you exhale, your hands come down in front of you, palms facing each other. They, the fingers, like the wrists, turn down. You sort of hit the bottom of a bowl. You ride up the other side of the bowl. And then you come back down the bowl, up the way you came, and then down the sides of your body into the holsters. And let's try that one more time. Breathing in deep. One last time, feel what your body feels like. Feel what your body feels like. Remember what that felt like. And I'm just going to check to see the comments if there's any issues with sound or images. No. 
hello everybody, by the way. Hello, Dorothy, Esteban, nice to see you. Valerie, hello, Pamela, Paula, thank you so much for being here. Sandra, hello, thank you. Kat, hello, Elizabeth, nice to all see you here. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday and Mother's Day. And um, so what I want to do next is do our alignment exercise. And for this, uh, we're going to use the wall. And so I'm going to move this on over. And this is another great exercise, whether you're uh, into whatever your practice or your discipline. Um, it's great for therapy and just general health. We're going to build a little bit of a uh, spinal awareness and connect the movement of our spine to our breath. So this is a, uh, it's, a it's just a fantastic exercise. So, and maybe you've done this kind of work before. I can imagine people in yoga classes or dance classes doing this. Martial art classes don't tend to emphasize this kind of work as much, and it's a real shame. It's really valuable. I highly recommend this kind of work. So you have your wall, and um, now take care of your back. So if you have any back issues, be mindful of them. And if you're young and you know eternally um, if flexible, you can go all the way down. Um, if you don't feel comfortable going all that way down, you can just start lower down, uh, or rather higher up. So you you just peel off your, your, all of your vertebra off of, the, um, off, off of the wall. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little game with our breath. And my favorite image of this is uh, like a beach ball in a bathtub. And what happens is that we're gonna, you know, you, 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 have, you fill up the bathtub with water and as the water rises, the beach ball rises with it, of course. And here, the water is our breath. The water level in the bathtub is our breath. And when we inhale, the water level goes up. And when we exhale, the water level goes down. And the beach ball is our posture. Our, it's gonna be us, the higher the, it's gonna be us curling our back up against the wall. What we're gonna do is we're gonna gradually be pressing one vertebra at a time into the wall but we're going to let our breath do it. Um, so the beach ball is, the higher the beach ball is, goes, the further up the wall we've curled our spine. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take a, an in-breath and the water is going to raise the beach ball. The, our breath is going to raise our body a little bit. And then when we exhale, the water will drop, but we're going to keep the beach ball where it is. So when I exhale, I empty out of breath, but I don't, I don't lower my spine with the breath. I keep it up at that new watermark. And then I inhale again. And then that raises my spine a little bit more. Then I exhale. But I keep my spine at that new elevated watermark. And we're gonna do that coming up mo almost all of the way. And we're gonna do it one vertebra, vertebra at a time, slowly and smoothly. And then we'll go back to the boa, to the python bow, and we could do the boa bow too, and you'll feel, a, what, you'll feel the difference. So this is again a great exercise to do whatever your discipline, um, and it's just great for general therapy and for relaxation as well. So I'll walk and talk you through it, or curl and talk you through it. All right, so start off as low as you want. Um, it's good to have, you can be more extreme and just have your sitting bones on the ground and that's a little bit more advanced, it's more intense. What's, it's, good, it's a good way to start is with your sacrum pressed against the floor and your lumbar just peeled off of the, uh, I, meant, I said floor, I meant wall. So keep your sacrum on the wall and just let your lumbar peel off of the wall. And just hang and relax. And if you, uh, no, if you need to take a break and just sit up for a bit, go for it, that's not a problem. But for now, you're peeled over and you're gonna breathe in deep into your lower back. You're gonna breathe into your middle back and upper back. And then, and that's, as you're inhaling, that's gonna move your body. You should, you should feel your body responding to your in-breath by rising a little bit. So that's, the, your breath is the, the water rising and the balloon is your posture straightening up a little bit. And then exhale, relax. Relax any tension in your arm, in your body, in your jaw. Just let it fall. And then 
inhale again. Keep relaxing. Fill up with breath. As you inhale, your body will curl up a little bit. It'll rise, it'll have risen a little bit, and as you exhale, keep it at that new elevation. Relaxing and releasing any tension. And breathing in, and you're peeling in, so I'm, as I'm breathing in, I'm pressing my lower lumbars into the wall. And exhale. I keep them pressed into the wall while the rest of my body relaxes and releases tension. And breathing in deep. As I inhale, I'm pressing one vertebra at a time, gradually higher up my spine. I'm, going, I'm pressing higher up my spine into the wall as I inhale. And then as I exhale, I keep that new raised watermark at that new elevation. And I relax everything above it, letting it fall down, letting tension drop down. Letting the breath press a little bit more of your upper, your, of your vertebra into the wall as you are going up. Good. <clears throat> Good. And this is about the top limit. Usually you can get up to the seventh cervical and you can just hang out and feel your body. And you can just shift your feet so you're comfortable and just check in. And usually here at this, in the, at this point, you can feel more of your back making contact with the wall. You can feel more of the length of your spine and the width of your back pressed along the surface of the wall. And then you peel your, your spine from the pelvis up to the top off of the wall so you press and then if you can do it you just press your head off if you can't do that then just press off and then walk your feet up towards the wall and um, so just take a moment feel what your body feels like standing um, standing off of the wall and uh, you should have a very different Spinal sensation. Just going to rotate this back up and I'm going to move the camera and we'll go back to the python bow. There we go. Good. All right. So take a moment, check in with your body. So for myself, um, I'm feeling the whole length of my spine a lot more clearly. I'm feeling a little bit wider, especially around the tops of my shoulders, and that's probably because I've been grading papers all day, um, you know, on, on my laptop, so my shoulders have been like this. So they've been like this all day, and so they're coming back to neutral, and so now they feel wider. And, and just take a moment, bend in the knees, and just 
curl up and just feel what the motion of your spine feels like. So I can feel the wave as I straighten my knees and lengthen my spine, I can feel that wave travel through my spine and my body a lot more naturally, a lot more fully. And that sensation, you take that sensation into the bow. The bow for the python, the bow for the boa. Especially those two. I mean, all of them, of course, but especially those two animals. So let's try the bow again one more time. And take this new spinal alignment into the bow. So exhaling. And as you inhale, Fill up with breath. The breath curls your body up, lifts the arms up for you, pack energy into your skeleton, and exhale. And drop. Come up, and then do the next bow. Draw, exhale, inhale, your body fills up with breath. The breath curls your spine up, lifts your arms up. You fill up your joints with breath and energy. Then pack that breath and energy into your skeleton, into the marrow of your bones. And drop down. That was a little bit quick. I hope it wasn't too quick for you. Let me know. And one more time. down the sides and come to a stand and just feel what your body feels like and again you're going for that sensation where you're filling your the space between your joints with breath on the inhale and on the exhale the empty out of breath and you're stacking your bones one on top of the other like a pyramid, like an Egyptian pyramid, landing onto the base stones, the cornerstones of your feet. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, I'll just check in here, see if there's any additional comments. Hopefully everybody's doing well and everything's clear. Hello everybody here for Python Day 7. Thank you so much. Great. You're welcome, Dorothy. Happy Mother's Day to you too. That's great. Thank you so much everybody for all the waves. Um, and I noticed you haven't sent, said much about these spinal waves that we can see in your body. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't want to throw too much. <laughs> so, um, the yes, you're right. So these, um, a lot of the, it's a great way to start um, is to learn to uh, press one vertebra at a time into the wall and to get articulate in your spine, and when and getting being able to transfer power in a wave-like action through your spine. Uh, it, that's, this is a, the, uh, the wall exercise is a key exercise to help you build being able to send a wave through your spine. Um, and um, so, uh, and, for a, and it's, just, it's, it's good to get everybody on the same page. And so this is what the purification or the um, rectification stage, that first stage, it's, being, it's about uh, undoing any, any areas or unwinding, untying any areas where you may have knots that you're not aware of so that you can allow the natural wave of power to travel through your body, to travel through the spine. So that's the purpose of those exercises. So, yeah, yes, you're going to see me 
do a lot more waves in, in the bow because I've, I've had a lot of practice. But for people who can't get there right away, this is the starting point. Just try and get every vertebra to uh, pass that wave through at first, and then after a while, your, the chain of your vertebra, that is your spine, will allow the waves to travel much more naturally and fluidly on their own without having to think about it. Um, and there's a lot more going on there. Um, so, um, let's do, I want to do a bit more of an alignment exercise. This is for the shoulders, this is for the hips. Um, so part of uh, being able, the other thing about sending the wave of undulation through the spine is that people tend to overdo it. And I have done this for a long time as well. Um, the undulation, I mean, I can get really funky and have like really extreme waves. But the problem with that is that it's articulation and mobility. It's coordinated, it's mobile, which can be really great for getting out of places it can be really get great for dodging, or if you get, um, you know, ac you know, struck in some way, or there's an obstacle, you can, you can compensate and get out of the way. That kind of mobility is great for evasiveness. However, that kind of mobility is not great for many for high repetitions or for power, um, and so people will get injured. They'll like be hypermobile. <laughs> and then um, they're working with a heavy weight or they're doing some kind of movement a lot and they get a kink in their back. And it's because they don't know how to find that balance between the, the mobility and the power. It's, sure, you get, you, you know, it's fun to explore the range of motion and make it as wide as you can, but the power and effectiveness of those motions and your, um, your the, the health of your skeleton benefit from a narrower range of that wave motion, right? So I can make it big, but you want to keep it small. Um, and the way that and why and how, part, <coughs> part of the missing picture here is that on either end of your spine, that wave um, it, um, is being grounded by your hips and is being expressed by your shoulders and your hands. So let's do a little bit of action here with the hips and the shoulders. And I'm, I'm gonna go over a little bit here. I usually try to keep this to 20 minutes, half an hour, but I'll, it's important, so let's, let's do this. Um, so this is, like, this is about um, grounding the lightning bolt of wave action of your spine with the uh, grounding rod of your hips, and I don't have a good metaphor for the other end, but with the expression of your shoulders, okay? So let's articulate the hips a little bit for Python and articulate the shoulders a little bit for Python as well. Um, so this is something that I do in my own classes, and um, so first, you, basically we call, we call this bicycle hips, um, and again, shout out to Kelly Lake, thank you for this. Um, you imagine like you're on a bike, but you're not pedaling with your knees, you're pedaling with your hips. And, you know, do yourself a favor, put your hand, one hand on your pubic bone, one hand on your lower back, and use that for feedback. And what you're gonna do is you're going to, um, you're going to press, you're gonna press down with one hip, press forward and down, and then back, and then come up. And as you do that with, well, you're going to do that with one hip, and the other hip will do the opposite motion. So it's like you're on a bicycle. Your hips are moving in a certain, making a circular action. And you don't want to move the rest of your body. So your pelvis down to your knees will move, but kind of your belly button and up, you don't move. And this might take a little while. So you circle, so if you had like a pencil coming out of both hips, you'd be drawing a circle on walls on either side of you. And your belly button would be the center. So I've got like two funnels, two cones, and the tips are touching each other at the belly. 
and they, the mouths are opening at the hips. And in terms of your lower back, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not curving your lower back, but you're, you're, you create a flat back with your tailbone being pulled straight down. So you're either, like, yeah, so if you have that like natural curve in your back, you fill that up and flatten it out. And you keep your back like so as you circle with the hips. Adam? And the circle in the hips. And then back pedal, go in the other direction. Good. Good. All right, then relax, feel what your body feels like. Now, um, actually, I want to hit. I just want to say one thing, one more thing. Um, we, you have the circling of the hips, and there's um, you want to avoid the circling, doing the circling of the hips while you're in while your back is um, in lordosis like this, where you're we call it Donald Duck. You want to avoid that. But you also want to avoid the pink panther, where you're like slouched, where you bring your back flat, but then you end up reclining. And, and so you're leading with your groin. So you want to avoid those, those two extremes. You want to be right in the middle. So you want to, it's almost as if you're standing straight up, and what you've got is a broomstick going through your hips, and you're rotating the broomstick, but without pushing the broomstick forward. Make sense? So the broomstick is right underneath your ear, right underneath your armpit, right coming right out of your hips. So it's a straight line, and you're, but you're twisting the broomstick. So you're rolling the pelvis without pushing it forward or without pushing it back, okay? Um, so there's that. Um, and that's a really great exercise to do uh, in conjunction with the wall exercise, with that spinal alignment wall exercise. And then there's the shoulders, and then we'll end off with this. And with the shoulders, kind of the same thing as the hips. You're gonna draw a circle. You're gonna, you have your two shoulders, and you're gonna draw circles. So they go forward, up, back, down, and you're just articulating them. You're articulating the shoulders, Keep relaxing the muscles as you do it, but express and articulate a full shoulder circle. Okay. Good, and other direction. Just feel what your body feels like. Okay. Let's do the bow, the python bow one more time and just feel the new mobility and just see how the bow feels different compared to before. So dropping down, inhale, fill up with breath.
up and down. Inhale. One last time. Just feel your body, and hopefully you felt more energy travel through that whip-like wave. Let's scan down here, see if there's anything else. It's popped up. Hello, Lindsay. Nice to see you. Hi, Joy. Great. Oh, okay, great. Super. Okay, great. All right. Um, so, uh, in terms of delving a bit deeper into Python, um, things that you can do are to, when you review your day, find the moments that surprised you, where you noticed something that you weren't expecting. And, no, uh, and notice what you observe. What are the kinds of things that are important to you that you observe? And, um, and, and review the day, again, like you're watching your day on, in fast forward on a video, and as you go through your day, what did you notice? What things surprised you? Um, another really great exercise for Python, um, it's an empirical observer. It, no it notices things that are quantifiable and measurable. Um, so as you go about your day, notice things that are tangible, that are, are perceptible, you know, like color, size, angles of things. Notice the timing. Notice patterns of timing. Um, th those are the kinds of things that uh, Python, um, that nourish your Python. Um, I, the kinds of mental exercises that Python really enjoys are uh, puzzle-like. So crossword puzzles, treasure hunts. Um, it loves reading murder mysteries or, um, you know, Nonfiction science mysteries where, you know, a scientist talks about how they um, un went about trying to make a particular kind of discovery, what clues they found along the way. So those are the kinds of things that Python really likes. This is important to us as human beings. Why? Because uh, when we look at emotions, there are kind of like two sets of emotions that we have. There's, you can divide this up in a lot of different ways. But one of the ways in which psychologists are now starting to think in terms of emotions is that you have immediate emotional reactions like joy. So there's something that's nice that you like and it makes you happy. And then there are longer temporal window emotions like pride. So this is where it's no one individual stimulus that makes you feel good, but it's a series of events over a long period of time that lead to an accomplishment or something, but they lead to a result that gives you happiness. And we feel pride for long-term happiness. We feel joy for short-term happiness. And the Python is gonna care about those longer-term patterns, those long-term, um, the kinds of events that you know play out over a longer period of time. And, <clears throat> um, so no, so yeah, so um, yeah, so getting comfortable with um, you know uh, big chunks of um, of patterns or um, uh, yeah of patterns over a long period of time. Those are the kinds of things that Python notices. Um, okay, so thank you very much for for being here. Uh, it's been a, a, a pleasure. And I hope that you're having a wonderful Mother's Day celebration and, um, and just a lovely Sunday evening in general. And we'll meet again here tomorrow, same time, same channel. And we'll be moving on to the next uh, animal, the white leopard, the snow leopard, which is about intuition. So thank you very much, everybody.